Monday, and one of my favorite parts of a Monday, something's got to make Monday better. <laughs> it is sports with our guy, Pep. Pep, what's going on? Oh, we're going to try, Patrick. It is a Monday, but we're excited because the NBA playoffs begin this week. We now know all of the playoff matchups, including the Lakers. Now, not technically in the playoffs yet, but they're in a good spot to get into the playoffs. They're in the play-in tournament. And don't forget, the Lakers are your uh, NBA in-season tournament champions, so anything can happen, right? But in this play-in tournament, the Lakers are the eight seed. They will play on the road at the New Orleans Pelicans. So if the Lakers win that game, follow me here for a second, if the Lakers beat the Pelicans, they would go into the first round of the NBA playoffs and take on the second-seeded Denver Nuggets. If the Lakers lose, they still have a chance to get into the playoffs, but they'll have to win another play-in game against the winner of the Kings and the Warriors, if all, if all that makes sense. It does all make sense. They did win enough and do <laughs> well enough for themselves to have a couple of chances here because they were flirting with that one-and-done deal, and that was a little scary for every Laker fan. Yeah, because I'm a Kings fan, and I was like, okay, for sure the Kings will be the 7 or 8. Maybe they'll even be the 6 and get out of the playing tournament. But yeah, now the, the Sacramento Kings and Golden State Warriors are that you know win-or-go-home game. So if you lose that play-in game, you're out. If you win that play-in game between the 9 versus the 10 seed, then you get the loser of the Lakers and Pelicans. So this play-in tournament is fun. Uh, there's a lot on the line just to get into the playoffs to be that 7 or 8 seed. Uh, in, in the Lakers' case, if, if they can win in advance, they would play the Nuggets in that first, you know, after winning that first game against New Orleans. But the number one seed... I don't know if they're necessarily very scary because they're, they're very talented but very young. They have no playoff experience. Is Oklahoma City. They're the number one seed in the Western Conference. So for some reason, the Lakers, you know, lose that first playing game to New Orleans, then beat the winner of Golden State and Sacramento. They would see the Oklahoma City Thunder in that case. I would much rather, if I'm the Lakers, play them than play Denver. Denver is, I still think that Denver's going to go deep, if not do it again. Patrick, I'm with you, man. Listen, I'm not very big on conspiracy theories and whatnot, but if I'm the Lakers, maybe you tank. I, listen, they've dominated New Orleans this season, but maybe you tank on the road in the Big Easy and then try your luck against the winner of the Kings and Warriors to try to get Oklahoma City the number one seed because, the, again, nothing against the Thunder, super talented, but they haven't done anything. And the Den Denver Nuggets are the defending NBA champions. Sounds crazy, but crazy <laughs> enough to work. Exactly right. So it's going to be fun. Those games, those play-in games are on Tuesday night. Lakers, Pelicans, Kings, Warriors. We'll find out what's going to happen after those play-in games. If you're a Clippers fan, you already know. In fact, we've known for a while now what the Clippers' playoff eight was going to be. They will take on the Dallas Mavericks in the official first round of the playoffs. The Clippers are the four seed. The Mavericks are the five. I think this is going to be a knockdown, drag-out battle in the first round very very tough matchup for both teams i think i agree yeah i think that's a tough draw for both teams in fact dallas might be the hottest one of the hottest teams going into the playoffs and the clippers had that stretch where they weren't losing to anybody so if they can kind of rekindle some of that magic and keep everyone healthy i know Kawhi, as we got towards the end of the season missed six games in a row if, if Kawhi is healthy you know Kawhi's done it before man he took toronto to an nba title so you know if he's healthy and he's full strength anything can happen for the clippers right could work out to where the Lakers advance against Oklahoma City and the Clippers go down to Dallas. Wow, it's going to be kind of wild. It's going to be super wild. I didn't even touch on the Eastern Conference. We'll just stay in the West. But yeah, there's there's some very intriguing matchups. And again, the Nuggets are the defending champions, so they're going to be a problem. But the rest of the West, I just feel, is wide open. Oklahoma City's good, but no experience. Same thing with the Minnesota Timberwolves. They've kind of emerged out of nowhere to be one of the better teams in the NBA. So I think outside of Denver, it is wide open in the West. Yeah, here we go, man. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, speaking of basketball, we're still uh, basking in the you know the glory of the Caitlin Clark mania, right? Of the uh, uh, Iowa Hawkeyes, that incredible run through women's college basketball. She got Iowa to the national title game. They lost against South Carolina, but that still takes nothing away of what she did 
for women's basketball, for college basketball in general, all the new viewers. Um, I mean, she's a rock star now. And, and Patrick, I bring this up because tonight on tax day, uh, it is the WNBA draft and the Indiana Fever have the number one pick and it's an absolute no-brainer. Caitlin Clark is going to go number one. But what's interesting is all the teams that Indiana is going to play on the road, all these teams, including the LA Sparks, I know the Las Vegas Aces uh, are another team that are bracing for Caitlin Mania because they're trying to find e either A, larger venues, or B, they've got you know limited seats and they're jacking up the ticket prices. Like It's going to cost a lot of money to go see Caitlin Clark. Man, she is creating a lot of revenue. And like you said, like Beatlemania, it is Caitlin Mania one and two. Kids, this is a good lesson for you out there. You know you're real successful when you got a little bit of hate, a little bit of jealousy <laughs> your way. There's a lot of people who are saying, you know, oh, the WNBA is coming, a reality check is coming. I'm like, oh, 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 hating right there. That is some hate right there. That means you're successful. You're not successful unless you have some haters, and she has some of those. Yeah, she does. I mean, I would say she's super polarizing, but yeah, some some uh, old school basketball players yeah. have come out and say, okay, well, she's uh, she's lighting it up for the Iowa Hawkeyes, but that's nothing. When she goes against you know professional grown up yeah. women, it's going to be a different story. I doubt it. <laughs> I think she's the real deal. Shoot or shoot, she can flat out score. So, uh, but yeah, I think she's going to be just fine in the WNBA. And even worst case scenario, maybe she's not great. Maybe she's just like very, very good. You can you imagine all the publicity and the money she's going to bring to the WNBA and women's basketball? Everywhere she goes, they're going to be selling out. I mean, TV ratings for those games are going to be better. Like, again. Even if she's not great, she's going to have a huge impact on the league and the sport. Yes, uh, I sensed a ton of hate out of Tarasi. Yes. Because when UConn got beat suddenly, there was just hate right and left. She wants to teach her a lesson. Look out, man. Caitlin can play. Yeah, you know, the only player I think is kind of comparable if you're an NBA fan is maybe Steph Curry the way that Steph Curry had that March Madness run and it's like well he came from Davidson and where's that and who is this guy and he got to the NBA and, and really revolutionized the game Caitlin Clark, Clark is kind of like that same player but on the women's side so tonight's the draft she's going to be part of the Indiana Fever and you know and again she's a rock star they're selling out tickets they're trying to find bigger arenas so she can play in so more people can come see her I'm glad you mentioned that because let's not forget the best part of the whole All-Star Weekend was Steph Curry and Caitlin Clark. Yes. No doubt. Yeah, people wanted to see that, man. They, they, cool. she's, she is must-see TV. In fact, I don't know if people still watch Saturday Night Live, but she was on Saturday Night Live this past weekend. I mean, they don't offer that to anybody. That's like Peyton yeah. Manning, Patrick Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey. I mean, that's some elite status right there for athletes to get on there. Uh, I like... I want Saturday Night Live to be so well, and this episode was good this last weekend. Yeah. But one of my favorite parts that a wife and I always watch is Weekend Update. Yes. And she was on Weekend Update, <laughs> yeah. and she was great. Yes, she was. It was funny. She was kind of not – they were, SNL was making fun of itself for not giving yes. enough respect to women's basketball, right. which in their way was giving respect to women's basketball. So it right. was cool. But the point is, like, they don't let just anybody on SNL. Like, it's it's Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, those kind of athletes. So it was pretty cool to see that. And, Patrick, finally, let's tee it up with some Masters talk. The green jacket goes to – Scotty Scheffler, for the second time in the last three years, he has been the world's number one player, I, I think it's like 82 weeks in a row. So there is no doubt. If you're looking for a star in golf, it's Scotty Scheffler. And uh, he's going to have a great kid because his wife was pregnant, and that kid held off <laughs> and let him get his next Masters. That is a good kid. That is like uh, I always tease my wife about my first child because the Super Bowl was right around – when my uh, first boys uh, right before Valentine's Day, and he came after the Super Bowl, I was like, "This is gonna be a good kid." <laughs> you did it, kid. Uh, as he as he gets older, you're gonna tell him that story, <laughs> you know. Like, so yeah, Scotty Scheffler's wife was pregnant. He was prepared to leave. He already said, "Hey, if she yeah. goes into labor, I'm gone. I'm out." But he did it. I, you know, he was I like good. How, I like how he just made the decision, dude. This is what I'm doing. I don't care what people think. So yeah. congratulations to him. And then one more highlight before we got out of here that I really loved was Vern Lundquist. Last Masters he was doing, 
it was very cool to see him watching Tiger Woods. And then Tiger came over and they shook hands. And there was a moment there. It was really cool to see kind of the player's legend and the voice of the legends of the Masters. It was a really cool moment. Yeah, legendary broadcaster. And obviously, Tiger Woods, I would consider the greatest of all time, right? Meeting yeah. on the course. And we're not going to see Tiger on the course at, at the Masters probably very much longer after this. Yeah. He, he, he made the cut, but it was not good on the weekend for Tiger. Don't forget, Vern Lundquist was in Happy Gilmore. One of my That's, favorites. Yes. He was in there. He was very good. And there's supposed to be Happy Gilmore 2 coming out at some point. So I'm excited about that. Vern's available, Adam, and yeah. maybe for Happy Gilmore 2. Uh, we will have part two this week of Pep on Thursday when we catch up on what went down all this week. Pep, tell me how to get your stuff. In the meantime, get my stuff on Inland Sports. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We have the Inland Sports Show YouTube channel. Go check that out as well. If you're down with the IE, you like sports, go check it out. That's Inland Sports. Thanks, Pep.